Hi everybody, in this video we are going to define a second order model for a PMDC motor. And the PMDC motor consists of two basic parts. One of them is the stator, which is the fixed part, and the other one is the rotor, which is the moving or rotating part. In the stator, a magnet has been assembled with a north pole and a south pole, generating a magnetic field. The rotor consists of uh, wounded wires, and they can be modeled electrically in a series connection of a resistance R and inductance value L. And when we apply a voltage to that rotor, then a current will flow through that rotor and due to the magnetic field and due to Lorentz law, the motor starts rotating. And in that rotor, a back EMF voltage is induced, which we call U EMF. And that equals K times omega. K is a motor constant and omega is the radian speed of the motor. We have also a mechanical model of the rotor because we can say that the motor torque is equal to an acceleration torque which is J times the inertia times the angular acceleration of the motor plus we have a damping and we have a friction of course. And there is a relationship between the electrical part of the motor and the mechanical part, and that is due to Lorentz law. So we can define three equations, one electrical, one mechanical, and a relationship between the electrical part and the mechanical part. Let's do that. First of all, let's start with the electrical part. So start, we start by applying Kirchhoff's law uh, uh, to the uh, model which we have shown over here. And that says, Kirchhoff's law says that the voltage U in equals R times I, which is the voltage across the resistance, plus L times di dt, which is the voltage across the inductance, plus the back EMF voltage K times omega. The mechanical equation is equal to the motor torque, which is equal to the inertia of the rotor times the derivative of the angular speed, the omega dt, which is the angular acceleration, plus the damping uh, torque d times omega, plus a constant friction TFR. And of course, we have the relationship between current and motor torque, which, is, which says that the motor current is equal to the motor torque divide, divided by the motor constant K. Torque is a newton meter, and the motor constant is a newton meter per amps. Well, these uh, three equations are the basic equations for the model. To define the model, um, we first of all translate these equations into the Laplace domain. So we simply uh, replace ddt by s. And then we get un as a function of s is equal to r times i as a function of s plus l times s times i again as a function of s plus k times omega as a function of s. Well, um, the input of my electrical model is the voltage and the output is the current. So we can say, and, I re, uh, and I'll um, get rid of these s's, we can say that u in is r plus l times s times i plus k times omega. So when i is the output and un is the input of my electrical system, I can say that i equals un minus k times omega divided by r plus l times s. We can do the same thing with the mechanical part of the model. We can say in the Laplace domain, and I leave the s's out, uh, t equals j times s times omega plus d times omega, and we have, of course, the friction. But to generate a linear model, we leave that friction out at the moment. So we leave that away, and then we get this as a simple equation for the mechanical part. For the mechanical part, the torque is the input, and the radial speed is the output. So we can say that T equals J times S plus D times omega. So output is omega, input is the torque. So omega over T is equal to 
1 over js plus d. All right. Um, that's um, the mechanical part and of course the relationship we have between the mechanical part and electrical part by this equation. Now let's start with the model and uh, first of all we start with um, the electrical part. I shift this a little bit to the upper corner over here. Well let's keep that uh, visible. All right we are over here. So let's start with um, the electrical part over here. So we can start as an input with a motor voltage here. So we have the U in over here and we subtract from that U in K times omega. So we have a subtraction over here and we subtract something a K over here and the input for that block arrow over here with a minus is omega and omega is coming from far away. All right, so we have u in minus k times omega, and we have to divide that by r plus l times s. So I can also say I have to multiply it with 1 over r plus l times s, and that brings me i. That's the motor current. All right, we've also seen that the motor current equals uh, the motor torque divided by k, so we can say that the motor torque is equal to the motor current times the motor constant k. So we multiply this by k over here. Well, let's put the arrow over here. And now we have the torque, the electrical torque over here. Now we can go further with the mechanical part of the motor and we have seen that the mechanical transfer function looks like 1 over Gs plus D. So what we uh, can do now is we have the motor torque and we multiply it by 1 over Js plus D, Js, sorry for that, here we go, Js plus D. And then the out output of my system is the omega. Well, that's the omega we had over here. So we can connect that more nicely as I've drawn over here. So now it's connected over here. So omega is my output. And now I have um, a second order model for my PM machine motor. When I have this, I can derive the transfer function, the complete transfer function of the motor. I can do it obviously by um, substituting the three equations uh, in one and each other, but I also can do it from this block diagram. Let's do it from that block diagram. So I move that to the left upper corner and I can see that um, when we want to have the transfer function for the motor, so for the second order motor model, we have omega, omega as an output and u in as an input and it says that um, the transfer function are all the blocks in the forward path divided by 1 plus all the blocks in the loop. Let's do it. In the forward path we have 1 over r plus l times s times k which is the motor constant times 1 over js plus d and we divide that by 1 plus this block times that, uh, that block times that block times that block, everything which is in the loop, which is 1 over R plus L times S times K times 1 over JS plus D times K again. All right, that is my transfer function. But of course, we do not like all these fractions in that transfer function, so we multiply every term in this fraction by r plus ls and by js plus d. When we do that, we have only left in the numerator of this transfer function k. We have to multiply 1 by r plus ls times js plus d, so we get r plus ls times js plus d and when we multiply this part of the denominator by, by r plus ls and js plus d there's only k squared left so we have k squared over here well we can work that out and then we have 
k in the numerator and the denominator we get ljs squared ljs squared we have two parts with an s r times j and l times d so plus r j plus l d times s and we have two constants r d plus k squared so make that longer plus r d and we have to move a little bit r d there we go plus k squared so that is my complete transfer function of the PMDC mode and we see that it's again it's a second order function because we have the highest power of s is s squared here in the denominator well that's the basic um, second order transfer function of PMDC motor but now let's uh, neglect some parts and let's have a look when we can make this model more easy if we can derive some essential parameters from this model and let's say and I go back again to my red color uh, here we are let's say if um, L is very small and if my induction is very small then I can neglect these from my transfer function and then we get omega over un is equal to k times well the j uh, the l is neglected so this part is neglected uh, the l and the d are neglected so here only rj times s is left uh, r times j times s well this part is also neglected due to the small d value and we have k squared over here and now we have reduced the second order model to a first order model um, keep in mind that the general expression uh, for a first order system can be expressed as h is a constant which I call k accent in this uh, situation divided by s time a time constant plus 1 so when I want to analyze this first order signal system and I want to derive the time constant I have to place a constant value of 1 over here and that can only be done by dividing this part by k squared because k squared divided by k squared brings me a 1 but I also have to divide this part by k squared in that case and of course the numerator so in that case we rewrite this expression as k over k squared is 1 over k divided by rj divided by k squared times s or s times rj over k squared and k squared divided by k squared was 1. Okay, so now we have put the first order model in the standard way. And what we see now is that the dominant time constant of a motor is this time constant. Rj over k squared. So when you put a step voltage to the motor, the motor starts to run. And the time constant of that motor the value at which uh, the speed of the motor is 63% of its n value can be found at a, a time uh, at a time is equal to the time constant which is equal to r times j times uh, over k squared so r times j over k squared that's the dominant time constant of the motor keep in mind that the real second order motor has two um, first order models in the system so it has an electrical first order system and a mechanical first order system so uh, for the electrical first order system electrical we see that the transfer function equals h is 1 over r plus l times s remember when we compare it to the general first order notation this one 
we want to have a constant value in, in the denominator which is equal to 1. So I have to replace this constant value of r, replace it by 1, so I have to divide everything by r. So the electrical part is equal to 1 over r divided by L over R times S or S times L over R plus 1. So the electrical time constant of the motor equals L over R. And we also have a mechanical part of the motor. Mechanical. Mechanical. And from the mechanical transfer function, the transfer function was equal to 1 over js plus z, js plus d, and when we put that in the standard form, we divide everything by d to get that 1 over here, and then we have 1 over d divided by s times j over d plus 1. So the mechanical time constant of the motor is j over d. So again, it's a second order model with two time constants, an electrical time constant, which is equal to L over R, and the mechanical time constant, which is equal to J over D. This is a difficult one because it's always difficult to specify the um, damping accurately. So this is a, diff a difficult one. But when we um, look from a distance to the motor and we replace a second order model by a first order model, we can define the absolute dominant time constant of the motor and that is r times j over k squared so again three time constants electrical time constant and mechanical time constant but the dominant time constant of the motor which uh, determines the behavior behavior it's equal to r times j over k squared and in this way, by looking to the motor, by deriving its equations for the electrical part and the mechanical part, and putting in everything together, we can derive the model as we did over here. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Good luck with it, and I see you next time.